All right, guys, welcome to the show this week. We are on Bienville Plantation, White Springs, Florida, and today I'm joined by Mr. James Ferreira. Now, we have got 23 people here from nine states, and we're doing the first ever kayak bass fishing seminar on Bienville Plantation. Uh, James won uh, the giveaway that I did. So basically, Fluke Master uh, did a giveaway on his YouTube channel. I did a giveaway on my channel, and basically, uh, James was the winner. Ironically enough, James wins the thing, and his family is originally from Hendersonville, Tennessee, where I live now. And uh, tell the folks where you drove in from. Well, I started uh, I started Monday driving all the way in from Las Vegas. My parents are in Houston, so uh, did a couple stops along the way, saw them for a little bit, and then pushed through from Houston to Bienville last night. 12-hour drive, got in around 10.30 last night, and I couldn't be happier, man. Three days worth of driving to get here, <laughs> and now we're going to get out there and see if he can turn these things into a uh, the bass of a lifetime. What's yeah. your personal best, James? Not good enough, so we're going to try to beat that this weekend. So what is it? Come on, give us no. a number. No. I don't so like, he's going to get his personal it. best here today on Bienville. All right, so seriously, James, the camera's off now. What are we talking? <laughs> eight six, but it's not a double eight, digit. Eight six, bro, okay. that's a good bass, I'm man. a swim bait guy, though, and it's not a double digit. So West Coast, I mean, you got small. baits that are eight six. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. All right, guys, so here's what we got going on. Um, I honestly thought Gene was just being a jerk and pulled down on the boat ramp and uh, just blocked the whole boat ramp up so everybody else couldn't. So I was calling him out about it, and then he goes, I'm not being a jerk, I'm stuck. So if you look up the hill, that's my little Nissan midsize. And uh, we're about to hook it up to the old Fluke Master brand new truck <laughs> and uh, and pull him up the hill because he's he's stuck in a little bit of uh, but Florida sand. That ain't sand, that's, that's sand. clay. That's clay. For, the for this segment, you're stuck in sand. <laughs> So the reason we're at Bienville this weekend is we're conducting the first annual kayak bass fishing seminar. Myself and Gene Jensen, you guys know him as the Fluke Master, put a curriculum together to come down and share advanced tips and tactics on finding fish, locating fish, better use of your electronics, uh, strategies for becoming a better angler. We wanted it to bring people together for uh, for learning, for fun, for you know, us sharing the knowledge that we've learned and then in the future we're going to bring other people in to do seminars to share their knowledge. It's all about growing the sport of kayak bass fishing. I love throwing big baits because it's, it's a little more dedication, it's a lot more methodical, you've really got to read your layout, you've got to read what's in front of you and uh, you got to put this big giant bait where that big giant fish is and hopefully Hopefully he bites it. It's a, it's a lot of time on the water and it's a lot of days and days and days of casting until you get that one fish that, that makes up for it all, so. Well guys, I'm about six strokes from the boat ramp and I run into this guy right over here who has already got a toad in the boat, so I'm gonna kick it over to him, let him tell you what he caught the fish on and take a look at that toad that he just pulled in, so check it out. Oh. Look at this guy. Woo! It's a five pounder Bienville stud. So, Lou Martinez, Native Watercraft Pro Staff. It's the uh, second fish of the day for me. And it is an absolute beauty. It was a phenomenal fight. I was throwing the uh, Rodent Strike King Texas rig, the half ounce tungsten weight. Just dragging across the bottom near wood. Found them nice and stacked up. I'm gonna go back and uh, land another one. Okay, put this girl back in the water. Thank you so much for that fight. That was phenomenal. Boom. <laughs> Having a great time out here at Bienville already. Can't wait to get out there and get some more. Guys, this is what you call kayak hitchhiking. <laughs> Gene just basically hooked his crock on my boat, and he's going for a ride with the old Torquedo. What's funny about them crocs and them flesh-colored Carhartt pants he wears, it looks like he's ain't wearing any pants and he's got foot and stone feet. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm about to shut y'all off and I'm gonna go 
Catch a fish right there. I'm gonna catch one right here. All right, let's do it. It's like a little pecker, I think. <laughs> little keychain thing. See my rod tip? There he is. <laughs> the monster! I just caught a chicken nugget sized bass. Today on Tiny Bassin, targeting tiny bass. I'd be the king of it. <laughs> I'm the dink slayer today. <laughs> Well, they're right where they're supposed to be. We just need to find the big girls. The big ones. Hold on, I'll show you where one's at. So I ran into James on the water and uh, he asked me if I was catching anything. I told him I was catching a few small ones and I said, about the size of your bait. But actually, his bait's bigger than some of the bass that I'm catching. Look at that. We can just put a hook in this guy and throw him back out there. Oh yeah, yep. Gene just slid up into the spot and like second cast is, dude. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's gotta be a four or five pounder. So basically what I was doing was just throwing it out. I was I'm parked in the shallowest water I could find, throwing it out in deep water and dragging it up to the edge of the hydrilla line or hard edge as, as I call it. Nice lightweight black worm. Shook it once, felt the thump and <laughs> wow, the fight was on, but it was fun. Good fish, solid five and a half, maybe six, but I wouldn't give it that. Beautiful fish. Get on mind me, buddy. You're cutting through my fishing spot. Let me show you what we're doing here. Gene and I are using what we refer to as the leapfrog effect. In other words, we theorize about where we think the fish should be and then go out and spread out and, and try to dissect the spot. So we pull up on this little point, I mean, uh, this little cove, and there's two points leading into it. Gene takes one point, I take the other point. As soon as we pull in, I catch a fish. Gene hollers over at me and asks me what color I was using. And I told him I was using black. So he said, well, I'm using a black worm. How much weight are you using? I told him how much weight I was using. He said, that's probably the problem. I got on too much weight. He drops down to a lighter weight catches a big fish, five, six pounder. And the theory behind it, or, and the reason that I think that the lighter weight was the key is uh, this hydrilla, hydrilla has a hard edge on it and where it stops, the milfoil picks up. So I'm throwing this weight out and I want it to lay down on it. It's like dragging it through carpet, okay? I want it to lay down on it and drag it across the top. Vegetation filters sediment. Uh, so any of the vegetation, especially like milfoil, has got a lot of sediment contained in its, in, its, uh, in its structure. So when you bump it, it kicks up a silt cloud. What I like to do is drag these baits along and kick up that silt cloud and then let it sit for a second. And it gets that, that predatory fish's attention and he looks over and he sees that cloud and, and is looking and listening and watching. And then as soon as you move it, he's on it. So if you want to catch fish, you got to put it where the fish are.